Giardia, what an annoying parasite. So your dog was just diagnosed with this. And I see Giardia on checkups on a weekly basis with new puppy owners and even some adult dogs. Giardia in humans is known as traveler's disease or beaver fever. Since the CDC says that most human Giardia cases are from beavers. Baby, 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 oh my baby, 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 oh. All right, so that's it for my audition for The Voice. Now I'm gonna get into the clinical signs of Giardia, what you're gonna see in your puppies and dogs, and how we treat it. So let's get into this. So what is Giardia? Giardia is an intestinal, protozoan, single-celled parasite. Giardia exists in two forms, trophozoites, a swimming form which infects the GI tract cells, and the cysts that are shed and defecated out in the feces into the environment. The cysts are hardy and can live in the environment for months and survive best in water. Giardia exists everywhere and there is really no getting away from it in the outdoor environment and that is why our puppies get it so often. Transmission of Giardia is a fecal oral route. So that means that your little puppy will either get it from eating feces in the soil or in water. And we all know these little puppies love to drink any water or eat anything when they're on their walks. Right, Chloe? You'll eat everything, won't you? Oh yeah, she will. Giardia is basically everywhere, guys. It's in the environment and it's hardy. But dog Giardia is normally not transmitted to cats and neither is cats back to dogs. There are specific genotypes for each species, so they kind of get their own Giardia. But Giardia is zoonotic, which means humans can get it. So I just kissed Chloe right now, I hope she's clear of Giardia, but there's a low chance of humans getting Giardia from their dogs, however, I have seen it. We do need to be careful with those humans who are immunocompromised because they have a low immune system, and if there's a puppy in the house with Giardia, you don't want them kissing it. The most common clinical sign for Giardia in puppies and dogs is diarrhea with blood in it or they come in for bloody stool. The owner is pretty panicked and worried, and so are veterinarians, because these little dogs can get dehydrated quickly from all of that diarrhea. The other thing they can have, which is frustrating because it's pretty vague, is lethargy, not wanting to eat, and sometimes vomiting. So if your puppy isn't acting right, you always need to bring them to the vet for them to check them out. Now, if your adult dog gets Giardia, they may have no clinical signs at all, and they're considered asymptomatic, and you might not need to treat them. They could just shake it off. But if you have a puppy in the house with Giardia, it's still best to keep them separate so your adult dog doesn't get infected. But like I said, if it does, he might just be fine. To test for Giardia, you could either bring in a sample of your puppy or dog's poop, or we could put a fecal loop up there and get a sample at the vet. We can check it in-house to look for swimming trophozoites or cysts, but mainly we send it out to the lab to do PCR testing to check for antigens, and this is a more specific test to test your dog for Giardia. In-house fecal testing is cheaper because we can look under the microscope and find the cysts or swimming trophozoites. However, they're not always shedding cysts, so we might not see it. They shed intermittently, so that's why we use the PCR or antigen test, which is more accurate in diagnosing it, and that poop sample gets sent out to the lab where professionals test it. A fecal test can cost anywhere from $40 up to $100, depending on what your lab costs are in your area. Finally, let's get into the treatment of Giardia in your puppies and dogs. First off, if your puppy or dog comes up positive for Giardia and they have no clinical signs and no diarrhea, then a lot of vets don't treat it. And they actually taught us that in vet school. If the dog is fine and has a nice big hard poop, then we don't need to treat them and the dog could shake it off. But if your dog is having diarrhea all the time, keep in mind that this is frustrating to treat and it can take from six to 12 months, up to a year, to treat your puppy um, that has Giardia. 
because it's really hardy in the environment and dogs keep getting reinfected. Puppies eat their poop, they walk out in the same yard where the cysts are living, and they keep reinfecting themselves. So your veterinarian isn't trying to make money off of you and keep selling you the treatment for Giardia. It is so frustrating. We don't like to deal with this. So let's get into the treatments. The treatments that I like to use for Giardia includes metronidazole, 15 to 20 mix per kg, by mouth once a day for five to 10 days. And then I also add on Panicure or Fenbendazole, which is 50 mg per kg by mouth once a day for three to five days. And you can mix that packet into their food or you can get it as a liquid if that's easier. There are other medications like Albendazole or Albon, but those aren't really used nowadays, but some veterinarians still use them and they could work. And then there's another one, Azithromycin, which I saw a couple videos of a Frenchie that couldn't get treated for Giardia and their veterinarian used that. And then there were other articles online circulating about azithromycin being used for Giardia. So this might be something later on used, but for now, I love using metronidazole and Panicure and it does the trick. Now you know the medications, but you need to know the cleaning protocols to keep your puppy negative and free from Giardia. The first thing is bathing your pet every other day to remove any cysts that could get stuck onto their fur and spot butt baths around their bum that could reinfect your puppy. The second thing is picking up feces as soon as a bowel movement occurs. I know this is tedious, but while you're treating Giardia, you want to make sure that that poop is not on your lawn. The third thing is, and the most important thing, is do not let them re-eat their poop. I know you guys are crate training your puppies, but you have to keep things clean by changing out the blankets and using bleach or spray cleaners to clean out their crate or pen. The last thing is, I wouldn't take your puppy or dog to the dog park while they have Giardia because they can infect other pets there and you wanna keep them separate from other dogs that may have Giardia themselves who could reinfect your puppy. A final note and tip I wanna give you pet parents that are treating your puppies and dogs that had Giardia is to put them on a gastro diet after or during the treatment because those protozoans were swimming in their intestines and tearing up their gut that they're gonna have a sensitive stomach after they've had Giardia. And even I've had friends who've had it and they said that they're super painful and they literally slept by the toilet and their gut was in such turmoil. So make sure to take care of your pet's gut after they've been treated for Giardia and this can also help their stool. So they might keep having loose stool because those trophozoites were swimming in their intestines, tearing up all those little cells and then they keep having diarrhea. So keeping them on a bland diet, um, there's several brands you could talk to your veterinarian about um, that that'll really help your puppy. All right guys, that's all for this video about Giardia. I hope this really helped you. I believe in you guys. You can do it, it is treatable and it is super frustrating though, I understand that. But like always, I have millions of pet owners watching my videos. If you guys could comment below your journey with Giardia with your puppy or dog, that would be super helpful to someone else. And like always, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and hit the bell to get notifications when I post new videos, which I post every week. So I'll see you guys next week.